Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at adding a clock generator to your GVS control. Now, the reason why you'd want to do this is if you are experiencing any type of horizontal tearing, as this will eliminate that. Alright, so let's get started. On the GitHub you'll find very well written and in-depth installation instructions. The link for that will be in the description below. This is the GBS control that we're going to be adding the clock generator to. Now we already went ahead and modified this to accept the custom firmware. We did that live on stream from scratch, so if you did miss that, no worries, link is in the description below. Now this right here is the clock generator. Altogether there's going to be five wires we're going to solder to this board, and I'm going to show you right where we're going to mount it as well. It really does mount really nicely on this heatsink. Now I always recommend putting capped on tape underneath to prevent any type of shorting and maybe a little bit of mounting tape uh, as well so it does not move around. These are very small wires we're going to be putting on this board so again the better it's mounted the better it will be. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to solder from the clock zero the middle pin right to pin 40 on the True Vision chip. Um, it, you can tell that pin right away because it is the one right on the end and first we're going to flex it up. We have Kester No Clean, however we are going to be cleaning it with isopurple uh, afterwards. So make sure to use flux on this. I'm using a 6040 solder as well as uh, my tip is a little low on heat. We're going to put it at 300. The reason why is because we don't want to burn any type of pads or anything. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solder this to the IC itself, to the actual IC leg, using 30 gauge Kynar wire. What we're going to do from there is fold it up and around with our tweezers and get it to the middle of the clock zero pad. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that pad with solder to prepare for the wire to go into it as again the wire is already attached to uh, pin 40 on the IC. I'm just going to use my tweezers, heat up that blob of solder, and put that wire right in its place. Now arguably that's probably one of the harder parts of this mod so I like to get that first done and out of the way uh, especially since our board is mounted so that shouldn't go anywhere. And don't forget to go ahead and clean up everything. Again check it make sure it's nice and tight and then clean everything with isopurple alcohol. Now I'm going to show you a little bit up close here so you can see just how that looks. See you can see it on the camera there hopefully it'll focus. There we go. So you can see it's attached right to the right, literally right to the end of that uh, 40 pin, uh, 40th pin on the True Vision, right to the clock zero. Now our next pins we are going to run to. Um, you can run them to either R10 on the right side and R37 on the right side of those resistors, or you can run them directly to the IC pins. Now I'm going to run these directly to the IC pins. These are going to solder to the SCL and the SDA points on the clock generator board. So again to clarify, R10 on the right side of the resistor is for SCL, R37 on the right side of that resistor is SDA, or you could also use the pins on the IC, pin 15 for SCL and pin 16 for SDA. One way you know that you're going ahead and you're soldering correctly is that they will crisscross um, from the IC to the actual clock generator board as you'll see once we solder it up. Now I've gone ahead and I've already soldered on pin 15 for the SCL, so now we're going to go ahead and solder pin 16 for the SDA. Now you can attach it to the IC itself or you can attach it to the pads. I'll just attach it to the pads here as I'm using 30 gauge Kynar wire. Very thin stuff, but that's all we're going to need. However, you can use larger gauge wire if you feel the need or that's all you have around. Um, but as, as these adjust um, signals, we're in good shape to use Kynar. 
So there you go, we're just gonna flood these pads. Now I don't recommend actually inserting the wire into the via on the clock generator just because there is that metal heat sink below and you don't want it to poke through the tape and possibly uh, cause any type of shorts. So here we are, we're just going ahead and putting those wires in the correct place, SDA and SCL, soldering it to the top there. And there you go, we're in great shape with that. As you can see, they crisscross over and go right to the IC. Perfect. As always, don't forget to clean all of that flux residue off your board. Now, to give you an idea, using anything that's 90% or better of isopurple alcohol will do the job just fine. Now, the last part of this mod has a soldering to either side of capacitor C47 or C48. Now, I'm going to go with C48 because I already did replace that capacitor. Um, so what that's going to have fresh solder and for in this case, uh, it's a little bit bigger of a capacitor. So we're just going to go ahead, flux up C48, and now we're going to run Kynar wire from the right side of C48 that will go all the way to the capacitor on the actual clock generator board. So as you can see here, again, I flexed it up. There you go. Got a, I already tinned my wire. I'm going ahead and heating up that side of the capacitor. Perfect. And I've already cut it to length. And so with that last part there, um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put that onto the capacitor itself. So I flex the capacitor, it's gonna be, again, if you're facing this way, the, uh, the top part, the left part of the capacitor, or if you have the board with the inputs facing you, it'll be the top part. And again, just flex it up, heat it up. I've already got that uh, tip already tinned on that wire. Definitely use tweezers as the Kynar is, you know, it's rather stiff wire, so it might fight you a little bit. Um, so using tweezers is definitely going to help. I'm still keeping my iron around 300 Celsius because of course I don't want to burn any pads and you don't need a lot of heat for this. So there you go. That's in and now we have one more wire left in the mod and that's going to be on the other side of C48. Now if you were putting this on capacitor C47 it would be the same thing as well. So now on the left side of C48 if you have the inputs facing you we're going to go ahead and solder it to uh, either on clock two, either the left pad or the right pad. Do not solder this to the middle pad of clock two. So instead, what I'm gonna do here, as you'll see, is I'm gonna go up stripping the wire with my nail clippers. Um, that's the best way I've found to really strip this very thin wire. It's very, um, you know, very fragile wire, if you will. Let's just use nail clippers instead of wire strippers. Um, as the traditional wire strippers tend to cut right through or not even be uh, small enough to strip any of the wire. So then I go ahead, I'm tinning up my sides of my wire right here. And flex up that capacitor again with some Kester No Clean. And then we're just going to put that right in place. There we go. Again, just a little bit of heat, tack it right on in, give a little tug, make sure it's all in good. I'm going to flood that left. Um, again, now facing us or the you know top hat if you have the inputs facing you. Uh, I'm going to flood that with solder. Get that kind of wire in there. Again, oh, use tweezers. As you can see, I didn't at first. And uh, I just, you got to use tweezers. You're going to make it a lot easier for you. And there you go. We are all set. So to recap what we've done today, we have the left side of C48 soldered to the clock two pad. We have the right side of C48 going to the capacitor right there on the clock generator board itself. We also have the 40th pin on the True Vision chip connected to the middle clock pad of clock zero right there, as you can see. And we ran our wires for the SDA and SCL pads. So we ran pin 15 all the way to SCL on the clock generator board. And we ran pin 16 all the way down, crisscrossing over to SDA on our clock generator board. And that's it. The best way to double check your installation is to open up the GBS controls Wi-Fi, go down to active frame time lock, not compatible with all displays, click on frame time lock. And when you do, It'll take a few seconds in some cases, but when you do, you'll see 
It will say active frame time lock not necessary with external clock gen installed. If it says that, that means your installation went perfect, everything is well, uh, and you're good to go. As you can see, the clock generator is a fantastic mod to add to your GBS control with custom firmware. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like, uh, and of course, subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>